In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Now as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Today's gospel is simply talking about an encounter between the Lord Christ and a specific person. This specific person was mentioned in three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. The Gospels gave various description for this person. St. Matthew said that he was a young man. St. Mark described him that he was modest and polite. When he saw the Lord, he knelt on his knees so he, he was a man of morals, a man of decency. St. Luke mentioned that he was a ruler among his people. And the word ruler means that he was either a rabbi, a teacher, or a chief of a synagogue among his people. Beside all of that, the three Gospels agreed that he was rich. So I want you to imagine with me a man with these descriptions. A young man, rich, religious, polite, in good social position. And we wonder, someone like this person, what do you think he lacks? We are all looking for those things in the world. But despite all of these gifts that he got, he felt that he is far away from eternal life. So what did he do? He ran to Christ, asking him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Imagine this man who is a religious leader, or a rabbi maybe, who, when Jesus mentioned the commandments, said, Teacher, all these I have kept from my boyhood. Means since I was a boy, I was a man of worship, a man of prayer. But although he was steadfast in the commandments and the law, he was not sure about his eternal life. He was not sure that he would enter the kingdom of God. And this in itself, my beloved, revealed to us a crucial, very important point about our salvation. And this point is summarized in one question that have been asked all the time until today from, non from the non-believers and the believers. They ask and say, wasn't it enough that God would give man some commandments to follow after the fall in order to enjoy eternal life after fulfilling those commandments? Why God didn't give some commandments to Adam and Eve while they are in the paradise and tell them, if you follow those commandments, I'm going to give you eternal life. Although you did or you commit a sin. God took another way, a very long way. And he says, commandments do not give man salvation. 
And the proof is, Adam and Eve themselves, they have a commandment not to eat from the tree. So they, they don't follow the commandments. If I give them more commandments, they're going to break them all. They're going to be more sinners. Well, there is no salvation for sinners. So in order to save, to, to, to give salvation to man, there is another way. Why this, uh, there is another way? Why not the commandments? Because simply, the issue was not some commandments to be given to man, but the problem was that the nature of man became corrupted. Today's gospel and the story of this young man is a clear proof. You have here a man who received many commandments in the law of Moses. And despite of his adherence to all the commandments from his childhood, he was not sure, he was not certain about that he has a share in the eternal life. In the Old Testament, there is a story. When we read it, we get astonished and wonder what it means. It is about Moses, the ark prophet. Moses, the ark prophet. This Moses is the man who received the commandments from the mouth of God himself. That's good. Moses, whom the Lord spoke to face to face, as a man speaks to his friend. Very good. Near the end of his life, God came and prohibited Moses from entering the promised land. God, Moses is the one who received the commandments. He's your prophet. He followed the commandments as you give it to him. He even taught the commandments to the Israelites. How come you don't allow him to enter the promised land? And we saw Moses in the story he kept begging the Lord many times. Please, Lord, I pray. That is his own word. I pray, let me cross over and see the good land beyond the Jordan. Those pleasant mountains and Lebanon, let me cross over and see them. Let my feet touch them. But the Lord said to him, very strange, enough of that. Speak no more to me about this matter. Why? Why, Lord? What is the meaning of all this? And we keep wondering. Well, the meaning simply is that Moses represents the commandments. Represent the law to the extent that it was known by his own name, the law of Moses. As for Canaan, the promised land, it represents heaven, the place of rest. And from that story, we realized that despite how many commandments man would receive, by them alone, he cannot enter or enjoy the kingdom of heaven. So the question now is, what was lacking? The answer is what the church and all of us are fasting for nowadays, awaiting to celebrate the incarnation 
of the Son of God. And you ask, what is the importance of or the necessity of the incarnation of the Son? The incarnation is the only guarantee for man to inherit the kingdom of heaven. The assurance to enjoy the heaven. The certainty of enjoying eternal life. The confidence that I have a share in God's kingdom. In the New Testament, there is also a story, the same story of Moses. But with another name. His name was Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus was a man without blame concerning the law and the commandments of God. Fine. Are you satisfied, Saul? Are you okay? You feel that you have the kingdom of God? Suddenly we find him crying out to the Lord and saying, I am not. What do you want me to do? What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And this is, my beloved, is the cry of all mankind. This same soul of Tarsus, when he recognized the incarnation and the importance and became St. Paul, the believer and the apostle, the same person who cried, say, saying to God, what should I do? He commend his disciples and Timothy, listen to his words, lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called. So the issue, my beloved, is not just and bigger than some commandments that God gives. The problem, as we explained, that the human nature suffers from corruption. And it needed, and it still needs, to be renewed in order for man to enjoy the kingdom of God. So in this story, we have a man who is very polite, but he couldn't enjoy the assurance of entering the kingdom of God. I'm saying that because some people, and sadly I say, those people are believers in the church. Some people think that Christianity is merely few morals. And whoever have just some morals in his life would enter heaven automatically. Certainly not. This is what the Bible said. Again, because some think that spirituality is to stop few things in your life, some bad things, like cursing, lying. And one would, one would uh, be polite and gentle with people. So he has the right to enter the kingdom of God. No one has the right to enter the kingdom of God. And that's because... Here we have a very polite young man, but he feels that he lacks the certainty of enjoying the kingdom. And he kept asking what to do more. Now we know the reason that the human nature is corrupted since the fall of Adam. 
And it was written that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Means the fallen nature, the corrupted nature, will never inherit the kingdom of God. Nor does corruption inherit incorruption. And still, although we have this in our Bible, we still have some people among us asking about so many people and peoples in various countries exist on earth. Very polite people. They follow sublime set of morals. Are they going to inherit the kingdom? The answer is obvious throughout the Bible. No one, no one will enter the kingdom of heaven except through the person of Jesus Christ. Today, today I was performing the sacrament of baptism and I came across this saying of St. John the Beloved and his first epistle. This is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Period. That means entering the kingdom of God is through Jesus Christ only. All humanity are crying out to Christ like this young man saying, What shall we do that we may inherit eternal life? St. Peter once said to the Lord, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. So the answer again is that all humanity, everyone, needs Jesus Christ our Lord. Because he is the only way for man to enjoy the kingdom of God. He himself, Jesus our Lord himself, said that to us. And he is not a liar. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way the truth, and the life. There is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved, nor is there salvation in any other. Neither commandments, nor morals, nor being polite, being gentle, give to the poor, all of these are good. And it's a must. But the only way to heaven is our Lord Jesus Christ. I'll end with this question. Some of you who are alert and awake will have this question in their mind. But Abuna, we notice through the, this gospel of today, that the Lord, in his answer to this young man, he mentioned the commandments. Correct? He mentioned the commandments, and, and, and the young man answered saying, I have kept them from my boyhood. So what is the story? What is, how we reconcile this? Well, it is simply answered. Briefly, you have to know that Christ would not contradict himself. Christ is the Son of God who is the one who gave the commandments from the beginning. But there is a difference between 
trying to fulfill those commandments alone, on your own, which, by the way, you will never be able to. No one could keep the commandments, all of them, together. No one. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you about even Moses himself. The ark prophet, the one who received the, the commandments himself, he couldn't kept it. So Christ will never return in his words. He gave commandments to follow. We have to follow the commandments. But the problem is that we try by our own selves to fulfill those commandments. So there is a difference between fulfilling those commandments alone and fulfilling those commandments through our Lord Jesus Christ who already fulfilled them for us. Taking the commandments away from God and trying by yourself will never lead you to heaven. Because now you are depending on your power, your own power, which you don't have anyway. You're going to fall no matter what. You're going to fail no matter what. But taking the commandments, this story, taking the commandments, running, kneeling before Christ in your inner room, asking Him, teacher, teach me to do your will. What shall I do? with those commandments that I may inherit eternal life, you will find Jesus looking at you, loving you. Looking at you and loving you. This is the only way to go to heaven. To Him is due all glory now and forever unto the ages of all ages. Amen. <laughs>